Yeah, I mean, one of the reasons that I am really interested in accessibility is because of assisted technology. Yes. Um, I was interested in the impact of technology on writing outside of disability, and then this was sort of just a natural connection for me. So what are some assistive technologies, either old technologies or new technologies, that you found that students have used successfully in a writing classroom or for writing activities? Um, well, and I think it, it's really, like to me, assistive technology is a really exciting field because yeah. it really depends on the student. Right. And, and basically like what their functional limitations due to the disability are and then how the technology helps accommodate that. Yeah. So we do have a lot of students that are using smart pens and to me this is like a really cool piece of technology that's not very expensive. Um, and it, what it does is it really allows students to take notes in class and it records the lecture or the conversation that's happening in the class real time yeah. while the student's writing. And so it allows students to go back and, and listen to what was happening so that if they have gaps in their notes, they can double check things. Um, and what it's done is really increase the independence that students have um, right. because they're not reliant on a note taker or some other kind of accommodation that really calls them out in front of people. Right. Um, other, or assist other types of assistive technology that I think are really helpful, um, Kurzweil is a screen reader. Um, so it basically, whatever appears on the screen, it highlights it and then reads it out loud. Yeah. It's very helpful for students with learning disabilities, um, ADHD, a number of um, hidden disabilities. Um, and then we also have a screen reader called JAWS that students who are blind use. And that's how people who are blind navigate the web. So if they open a website, there's a screen reader that reads what's what we see on the screen. Right. And so it really becomes their eyes. Um, so it's really critical. And then for faculty, the, the interesting thing is the way you design your materials, if you don't design them with accessibility in mind, a screen reader might not be able to view or read those things. Yeah. Um, but there's easy things that you can do to make it accessible. Yeah. You know? So, um, but it's that's why we're relying on faculty because we, you know, need your help in making those things accessible from the get go. Right. Like the technology is there. Yes. And it works in ways that's really useful. Yes. For people, but it's really dependent, right, on right. how that content is created. Right. And so faculty are essential. Right. And I do think if um, faculty are interested in seeing what a screen reader is yeah. like, a really good example of it, um, there's free screen readers online. Yeah. And if you just Google screen reader, you can, you can see a test run of one. Yeah. Um, and I think it's really helpful to see, like, if, if there's a document that, like a PDF or something like that, that is not accessible, it will just say image instead of reading what's on there. Right. So I think it is important to, to kind of try that out and see it for yeah. yourself as faculty. Yeah, and I use voiceover on my iPhone yes. a lot, and it's pretty easy to learn, and so it gives me yeah. kind of a quick way to test yeah. documents. And We also have a lot of students that use a program called Dragon, Naturally Speaking, yeah. and it's just basically like you have a microphone, and, and as you say things, it types for you, so yeah. it's like hands-free typing. So just like Siri <laughs> yeah, on <right>? your iPhone. <laughs> so um, you know, a student can say something and then it'll pull it up and it actually can navigate online. It can huh. type their papers. Um, it's a great tool. And, it, and the cool thing with assistive technology is yes, it provides access for students with disabilities, but all students would benefit from it. Right. And so um, really any student, if, they're, if they find that you know, it's difficult for them to type and think at the same time. If they can just say it, then right. they have it. Sometimes Dragon is a much better alternative. Yeah. So it just depends on the student. Yeah. <laughs> and like I use my voiceover if I need to read something and I don't have time to sit down. I'll right. <laughs> to use voiceover in the car while I'm driving. So yep. that's yep. been really that's helpful. Audiobooks. I listen right? to audiobooks every day on my way to work, and yeah. it's the same concept. And 
it's interesting because those actually started as a service for the blind and visually impaired. Uh -huh. And then um, the mainstream, I guess you'd call it, you know, society, the rest of us, right. realized, hey, I want audiobooks too. Right. And, and then the technology evolves. It's the same concept with voiceover. Right. Um, that was technology that was originally designed for people with disabilities. And then it became you know, available for everybody, which right. is great. That's what universal design is all about. Yeah. 